you can record and then if it's if it turns to be private stuff we don't have to publish it okay mate. yeah that sounds cool well that um, would oh do you want to just get get the get the important questions out first out of the way and then we can record after oh all right i've already started i'll pause it oh um, we can talk after at the end when we finished no i'll pause yeah. Okay, so we just we just um, covered some private issues there, which I mostly like to conduct things in the public, but um, occasionally it's good to keep your cards close to your chest. And Andy just said a really powerful thing about um, you know it, the law and um, that it's it's kind of like the bottom line is it's like a game of poker, and if you collapse or give your fear away you kind of like manifest your fear or you panic or you cave you've lost your position of strength and i was just giving a couple of examples where i don't know if it's still in ireland but it used to be that the police were supposed to be trained in basic gaelic irish language and so if you got stopped for whatever reason and you conversed with the police, the guardie in, in Gaelic, if they couldn't converse back to you and tell you fluently why they were stopping you and what they were, were requesting of you, then any the interaction was null and void because you weren't speaking the same language. So those two points, if you can expand on those, because we've seen a couple of examples where people representing themselves or people um, having all the right documentation, but then uh, uh, complying, complying with the unlawful people acting, you know, corporation employees calling themselves police. So talk about that. Talk about the the um, poker face, the thing about not caving in, and whatever else your new research is, Andy. We'll just do like a twenty minute broadcast. Yeah. Well, the. The, the poker bit was just about knowing knowing what cards, knowing when to hold and knowing when to fold, isn't it? Basically, yeah. If you and know you what to keep got, poker face, it's like not to not to panic, not to cave. Yeah, the things never to do. Things never to do is get angry. Whoever gets angry is lost. So when they're angry, yeah, you stay calm regardless. Yeah, you've got to you've got to remain in humility, remember, because the police, yeah, you know, they're like we used to be before we realised what had been done to us all. So they're still, they're not, they're none the wiser. They're, they're, they're just order followers. And the point is, yeah, they know that these acts and statutes apply because they apply to them. Because they've got a contract. They've given a wedding signature. The acts and statutes don't apply to anyone that hasn't given the, uh, the wedding signature and anybody that knows that they do require the wedding signature. So if you know that they require a wedding signature and you haven't signed anything, then you have no contract with them. So the acts and statutes don't apply to you because they only could apply to the consent of the governed and consent equals to a wetting signature. So that's on that side of it. But remember, because there's multiple ways, isn't there? There's multiple ways of getting, uh, proving that you're the living man, not the person. Okay, so if you're going to mix them, you're going to get confused yourself. So you stick with one. You know, but I stuck with the one that I stuck because of the terms and conditions, because all law is contract and contract is law. So I stuck with the quantum grammar because it was perfect, because I can't lie in it. But guess what? Nor can they. So it's perfect. So it's a rule one, rule equal, level playing field. This is what I like because I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah. So what are they going to do? Because without a victim, yeah, there's no crime. We all know that. It's very simple. Yeah. And Mr. Government doesn't wear trousers or a skirt because Mr. Government is a dead entity. It's a corporation. So government is nothing to do with the scenario. Okay. So that's out of the window. They're all acts and stats. That's the colour of law. So stick, stick to one, whatever it is that we're sticking to. Now, you, you started off with the fact of the Gaelic and the fact that the Irish, the, the, the Irish that spoke English and didn't speak the Gaelic, yeah, they let them go because they couldn't, they couldn't converse with them. Now, I'm sure it was at the same point in time, if there was something serious, they would have held them down and then they would have brought in an interpreter. And there's your, there's your answer. Now, the answer is there. Everyone, they have to give you an equal right. And that doesn't matter where you are in the world, yeah? Yeah, if, some, if a policeman comes to you, yeah, depending on what language you're speaking, yeah, they have to bring in an interpreter. 
Okay, so I think the reason it worked over here, and you might be right about more serious crimes, but I think the reason it worked over here because it's the native language. So the people, the Gaelic speaking people have a right to expect that their police as public servants will speak their language. I also believe that Gaelic was, it may, it may also not have been uh, corrupted. Possible, yeah, I'm not a Gaelic speaker. And, One of and that's in the same, similar same sense as what the, uh, with, the with the quantum. Okay. The quantum you see, if you, you see, the, the point is, because they work on deception. The, the policemen, they're just deceived. So you, I'm not blaming the policemen, they're just doing their job because they right. just they think that it's, a, it's okay to, to take orders. They've got no morals. That's the thing, because no, and that's a fact, by the way, and I can verify that 100%, yeah, because anybody who takes orders, yeah, hasn't got morals. They've suspended yeah. their own conscience in favour of following somebody else's orders, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, because the policeman, if he had morals, yeah, when you explain to him that, hang on, you need my consent to enforce any act or statute that it's plain and simple, it's in there. You need the consent of the governed. You're classing me as the governed, number one. Number one, I ain't governed. Yeah. Number two, I'm myself. Number three, yeah, consent is equals to a wearing signature. So even if you're going to class me as the governed, where's my signature? Because yeah, you haven't got that. Yeah, which is what sign. David Ward says, yeah. I don't sign anything for a start off. I use an autograph for my autonomy. So I put my auto, my autonomy graph on the paper, which is my not a signature. I do not do anything in cursory because I do not curse myself because that is the dead entity. That is the legal fiction, so to say. That is where they tricked as people into, doing what, into what they say. And that's why they're trying to say that these apply to you because you're a corporate entity. You're owned by the corporation because the, the birth certificate was registered to the corporation. Just like the policemen, they all gone and they've signed contracts in with them. So yes, those acts and statutes apply to those. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. We will stay they contracted, that. yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. They, they, that's, but that applies to, to them, not me. That applies to them. Yeah. They've consented. They've consented. Yeah, because when I was raided, they assured me that the judge had put a wet ink signature on the warrant. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't educated at that time to know that I would have to contract as well and they would have to show me my wet ink signature. And so the only mistake I made, which, which actually my son made, was to live, let them in, you know, to, yeah. get, to give them access. And that's just old fashioned manners. My boys are just raised that, to be polite, reminds, you know. That reminds me of the uh, old Dracula films. Now, do you remember the old Dracula films? Like, yeah, Dracula would come to the door, but he couldn't come in the house unless you invited him. Unless in. you let them in, it's the same with the devil, isn't it? It's, it's like the devil can't do anything without you giving him an, a foothold. You have to give the devil a legal foothold for him to play havoc in your life. You know, so it's the giving of the legal foothold. You know, and there will be times where they will, by brute force, overpower people because. Field McConnell tried to do, he had um, Kirk, whatever his name is, he had some pretty high powered common law people helping him, but in the end they, they got him, I mean they grabbed him and they put him in jail and now he's tagged and curfewed and fucking held hostage in a, in a, a state that is not his native state at all, you know, he was extradited and there is, there is a stage at which um, brute force can overpower common law, is there not? They've got the castle doctrine, haven't they? What's that? Castle doctrine. You, where you, you know, that's the most power. If anyone can defend themselves. So is that based on the principle of a, a man's home is his castle? Well, you can defend your castle. You know, I live in my castle. This is a castle. This is a castle. You know, this is... <coughs> If you say, where do you live? I live inside myself. Yeah. You know, this, this, this body that you see, again, this is another thing. This is another explanation, yeah? Trespass, because what's trespass? Trespassing on my land. Well, I am land, because I am of the earth. Everything that created this piece of flesh that you see in front of you came from the earth. Yeah, it does. When, it does. When, when, I, when I leave this body, yeah, this will turn back into the earth. So yeah, I am. Right. You were created out of dust. You were created out of the earth, yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. And there's also, it's also biblical to say that you inhabit your own earthly body 
because it says the body is the temple of the spirit and just you know you so you are indwelling your own your own temple kind of thing well i do love it that's where i live <coughs> where the eye of i am lives inside i this body this body this vessel this body you know you can call it a vessel you know you, you know like it like a car is a vessel but you have to go into the car yeah yeah into that vessel yeah to be able to m manipulate it and drive it I, if I left my body, if I went, if I astro projected, or if I, you know, left my body on, in spirit, yeah, then my body would be out of the consciousness. It would be, it would be, it wouldn't be doing anything. It would be still, because the I wasn't in there. The I of the I am isn't in my body to generate the electricity to to operate the muscles and make, make the movement of my body. That's you know the simple thing, the way of looking at it. Yeah. But, I mean, but that, again, again, uh, and again, looking at on the way. Because you know the ways of doing the action statues. I mean, the Baron's done it. The Baron's explained that very simply. That you know, look, consent. There you go. Consent. In consent, the denotation of consent is yeah, wetting signature. So okay, <coughs> he broke that. He broke it all down. And he put that through, and that's an unrebutted, an unrebutted affidavit, or should I say, claim? Because an, an affidavit is is a different word because of the poison of the words. A, a, a vowel followed by two consonants means no, and a daffet is a, a link up of a boat, of your of your tender on, on the back of a boat. So you've got no affidavit, you've got no you've got no boat. That's what the, the affidavit is basically saying. No. So a claim, you're making a claim, and that claim that uh, the Baron made was that uh, where's the consent? Yeah, there's no consent. Yeah, there's no, no. consent. There's no wetting signature, and the consent. He also went through the whole process of explaining that any of their acts and statutes requires the consent of the governed that they class you to be. So it's been null and voided. And it was also sent to all 650 MPs. So it's null and voided. We know that now. Now, if you know that, but why don't the police know that? Well, that's why I keep talking to the police when I talk to them. Yeah. The police need to know that. Yeah. Like, and a mate of mine, a mate of mine, I say a mate, well, yeah, it's a mate. He used to come to my bar here. He went over to England and he set up a business. He's gone, he's turned in, he went into uh, Man, uh, Manchester Metropolitan Police Link is. Uh, I won't mention his name, but he even got meant, he got said like, do you, how do you know Andy Divine? Like, you know, because he was on my Facebook, like, so. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, but he went in there and I, I gave him my piece. I gave him the information from it and told him, like, look, if you do that to me, if you go, Try and enforce those acts of statutes. You're going to get yourself into trouble, and I'm just giving you that warning because you're going to meet somebody like that, that's aware, that's aware of what the score is, yeah. And you're going to go do that, and you get yourself into a lot of. You can have a big uh, lean against you yeah. because of what you're doing. Plus the fact that it's malfeasance in office. Malfeasance in office is up to 25 years. Right now you're okay, but wait until the war crimes come in because we're in war right now. We're in a third oh, year, yeah. and the war crimes come through. Yeah, the Nuremberg Treaty didn't save the Nazis, and all these police that have been going around enforcing these acts and statutes on people without their consent, that's all malfeasance in office. And they will all be rounded up, you know? If, yeah. if, if, the, if the good wins, and good always wins, so when the good wins, yeah, these police are gonna all be rounded up because they've all been just following orders, and the yeah. Nazis it didn't save the Nazis and it won't save the police neither, period. I promise I give, I give you all you policemen out there, I, I'm, I'm speaking to you now, I'm telling you from my heart. I'm giving you. I'm giving you a heads up, guys. You're my brothers and sisters, yeah. But I'm telling you, you're all doomed. You're all doomed. I'm telling you. There's no two ways out of it. There's no history, way. Out. History will judge very harshly. Did you watch the Trafalgar Square demonstrations on Saturday in London? Yeah, I watched some of it. It's. I'm not interested in any of that nonsense. I'll not be protesting, mate. It's a point. Yeah, I get. I gave up. I think I gave up protesting around 2018. I just thought. Now I, they did work in Ireland with the water protests, just because of the sheer numbers. I think we had. Hang on, hang on. Uh, that's a different thing, isn't it? Because that's coming. That that's where they presented solutions. Now, if it was a, if it was a, it was a, if it was a gathering, yeah, where they was going to have speakers talking about solutions, then I'm all for it. If you're going to have a gathering talking about the problems, well... No, there was, there was Dolores Cahill. I listened to part of hers. Um, she's an Irish professor and she's an immunologist and a biologist, very well qualified. And she was giving solutions. She was saying, you know, this is where you'll find the document you need to send to school to, to tell them that you, they will be personally liable if they vaccinate your children against your wishes and without your consent. And this is how to keep your children safe. She was... 
they were trying to come with some solutions and tell people if they didn't hand them out, because there were thousands there, so if they couldn't hand out thousands of printouts, they could certainly say, go on this link and you will find exactly what you need as a document to protect your children or to go forward, you know. Um, but it was like it was it was like watching a science fiction movie because at one point the people actually overwhelmed the police and the police withdrew. Now it wasn't I don't agree with violence. I don't agree with violence either on one side or the other, police brutality or people beating up on the police. But nobody was beaten up on them. They just overwhelmed them. If people knew, right, there's 20,000 of us and there's like a thousand coppers or 5,000 coppers or whatever, all right, they've got batons and they've got pepper spray and stuff and they've got a uniform. But for a while on Saturday in Trafalgar Square, it looked like the people just came around them and said, look, choose your side. You know, you're on the wrong side, just back off. And they did back off, but then they came back with riot squad and, and what have you, and police horses and all the rest of it. It got ugly, it did get a bit messy. And that was the military coming. Yeah, the United Nations and water cannon. I mean, I've, you know, I, I've never lived in the north of Ireland, but I've seen the troubles and, the water cannon and the snipers, if it gets to that level, it's full blown in your face war instead of covert guerrilla warfare. At the moment, it's just like posturing who's gonna who's gonna break first. You know, are people gonna stay off the streets out of fear? Because in Dublin, there was starting to be really good protests in Dublin. They'd had one with about 35,000 people, I think. You know, it's fair, fair turnout. And very good speakers giving solutions. And there was protests like twice a week. And now, so now they've locked Dublin down. You can't go in or out of Dublin. Yeah. You know, to the point the that... Irish, yeah, from what I saw, the Irish were, you know, they, they're, they're different. You know, they're different. Hopefully, there is something... They're not, they're not the same as, you know, I mean, I, the way, the way in England, I did, um, I, I mean, I, I'd seen a couple. And to be truthful, they they are they are what they are. Protest. And PRO stands for no, no test. Again. I, wouldn't call, I wouldn't call them uh, protests. I would call them uh, gatherings or meetings of the minds because that's what it's more to be. And yeah. that's, that, that's what it should be. And, then, yeah. and the, mind, the mind should be presenting them with the solutions. Yeah, because I don't like shouty protests where people are scr shouting and screaming and, you know, and, and you can't turn it into a family fun day with face painting and, and uh, you know, like just lots of people doing party pieces. But I just know, you know, when it was the water protest, it was like everybody turned out, like everybody, full on families, grannies, you know, like push chairs, everybody turned out. It was like, no, we're not having this. We're not having this. And there were squads that would go around removing the smart meters and like resisting the forced imposition of water meters. And then there was researchers that proved that Ireland had bought a load of second class, diff, uh, not proper working meters from Germany. They were rejects from Germany. And we, our government, or Dennis O'Brien, brought them up at, to give them into Ireland. Like seconds. They weren't even proper water meters. They were like deficient, you know. So I know I, know I gave up, for the most part, I, I don't agree with protesting because you're going against something, you're still acting in their paradigm. Well, but the who, same, are to? who are you protesting to? Yeah, you're protesting to them to say, please be nice to us. So you're yeah. still acknowledging their position of assumed power. Yeah. They don't, they're not, they, they have no power. How are, things, how are things in Greece? Has it got hairy over there? What's going on? Is everybody wearing masks? <laughs> I went in the shop today. I went in the shop today, like, yeah, and some uh, old guy come up, like, saying, hey, mask, 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 mask. Like, yeah, and he says, you're okay. Because the shop doesn't, they don't bother with, they don't come near me now. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just going around the shop, and, and they come up to me today. She come up to me. She says, I've had a complaint. I've had a complaint. Uh, mask, mask. I said, uh, tell him to stand outside. So I just carried on shopping. She just, like, <laughs> oh dear! Be around me. If you want to be stupid and wear your mask, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not. Not a problem with that. 
I can't stop you. I won't trespass on your, your stupidity. If you wish to be a stupid person, then be a stupid person. I get really upset when I see children wearing them. It breaks my heart because at the moment in Ireland, 13 and under, they don't have to wear them. And I saw three youngsters. I went to get some cigarettes up the garage. There was three youngsters with masks on. I said, you don't have to wear masks. You know that, don't you? 13 and under, you don't have to wear masks. They're like, oh, they gave out to us. We tried to come in the shop and they told us off and said we had to put masks on. So they were just complying. So it's all about... It's I, had, all... Uh, I had somebody, um, was it last week? Last week that flew from the UK to uh, Catalonia and they didn't wear a mask on the plane. She's got a uh, note from, I believe, from a doctor or something or a letter. But I forget what she said she'd got. <clears throat> but like, you know, it's, it's, it's down to, again... Not so much poker as poker. I mean, poker was the initial bit because that was the wrong word to say about it. Because when you do know, you know. And the poker side, but when I was talking about that poker side, was you know when we're talking about the fact of the language. That was what I was saying. So when you know, yeah, that they can't contract with you in this, and I, I that's why I told you about the French, and that's why we went on to the Gaelic. The point is, yeah, the simple point is, yeah, is that you've got to have to, to remain in honour. Yeah, you've got to know what it is you're answering to. You've got to stand your ground. You've got to stand in what you know. You've got to step. Don't, don't bow down to an answer. Don't bow down to giving them an answer because that's what you think you want them to hear. I yeah. don't. I mean, I, I said this to the miss. It was the worst thing I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst thing I ever did. I so said, I don't want a yes person. Meaning, don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't say what you think I want to say. Yeah. I'm, all out with you afterwards because you then go and do something wrong and I'm saying what the hell are you doing that for you know but you just told me you understood you know why are you telling me you understand you know, don't say you know don't I don't yeah, want to yeah know. yeah now it's like argue all the toss it was the worst thing I ever did <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean she used to listen now she don't listen because I'll do it oh no because so you, know, you know that saying white man speak with forked tongue and there's this cultural thing where people don't say what they mean and it drives me mad. And one of the reasons I loved living in the California for five years in the eighties was because people for the most part speak, <coughs> they speak what they think, you know? Um, and I remember an American came to visit here for two weeks and he didn't buy a drink anywhere for anybody in any of the pubs. And he said, oh, but I offered and they, they, wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't let me buy. And I said, yeah, but the culture here is you're supposed to insist, you know, so, but it's double speak. It's like, let me buy you a pint. No, you're grand, you're grand. I'm buying, they're in here. There's your drink. And it's like, oh, thanks very much. But really, if you knew this culture, you'd be like, oh, no, no, no. Put your money away. I'm buying. And it's just such a stupid waste of energy. Such a dance. Why can't you say what you mean and mean what you say, you know? So, yeah. Hey, you know, be no. Uh, yeah, yes, be yes, and you know, be no, indeed. And loads of this is in the Bible. Loads of it is in the Bible, you know. That's what um, I mean. That's, yes, I mean, again, talking about answering is, you know, what is perjury? You know, what is perjury? To say you know something when you don't. That's yeah. to lie. That is to lie. But, you, but I wasn't lying. I thought, I thought. You know what thoughts just gone and done you, don't you? Don't answer. If you don't know, stay asking. Stay. I understood that perjury is when you deliberately say something that's not true. Right. Well, you deliberately answered. You know, yeah, you, the, the, the thing where people advise you to go no comment, I find that disingenuous as well because I think, you know, we've got we've got the mouth to speak and a mind to think. So why would we go no comment? Like I voluntarily went and gave a two and a half hour video statement because I had nothing to hide, you know, but some people would say, Oh no, you box smart. You say no comment. You don't say a word. You don't say a word, you know, or you might incriminate yourself, but like what kind of a world are we living in? If just by speaking truth, you could incriminate yourself unless you've got something to hide and you are hurting someone. The point is this, the point is this right there. What people need to fully grasp is that language. Yeah. That's what, that's the problem. That is the only problem. The only problem is the lack of the knowledge. Yeah. The only problem is the language. So when you're talking about white man speaks for tongue, yeah. Yeah. He also listens to one verse coming out of one man, but he's got two books. 
can't make and choose what he accepts as what it is because you didn't put a cipher or you didn't put a dictionary to the words that you're speaking. You know, does two plus two equal four? Does T O plus T W O equal F O R? Doesn't even yeah, make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like you tie yourself up in knots. It's it's so I don't know, it just seems so adversarial. It's like well, yeah, right. yeah it's, it's a simple way of I explain because listen, if it was numbers we were talking about, yeah, then it wouldn't matter what language we were talking in because you could translate the, the English into French or into German into yeah. any, any other languages, yeah, and they would all have the same meaning, yeah. So, in, in English, yeah, if I said to someone in French, does three plus three equals six, you know, he's going to put it in and say, ne, or whatever they say in French, yeah. Yeah, so because he's going to know, yeah, that three plus three equals three plus three, or whatever in Greek it will be three plus three equals hexi. Yeah. yeah. So you know, we can all across the board, across the whole world, we would all agree on that. Yeah. But if I then, if I then decided to write, I've got, hang on, I've got two books now. I've got two books, and this one here is what we all know, which is one plus what one equals one, two equals two, three equals three, four equals four, and so on and so forth. But this other book, yeah. That I now write, yeah, yeah, and whereas one equals two, two equals three, yeah, and then I say to you, what does one plus one equal? And you say two, and I say incorrect, which is what the law does to people. That's what the law does. Well, people go happening. in in all their naivety and good good intentions, thinking right, justice will prevail. I will tell the truth and I will get justice. And sadly, that's not how it operates. You didn't ask which book. You know, yeah. all you have to say is, so, so to me, yeah, when I just, as I'm asking the question then, right, one equals one, two equals two, three equals three, yeah? One equals two, sorry, yeah. one equals one, one equals so you're three. You're using yeah. a different, you're using a yeah. different. So you're going to have to say to me, yeah, to give me an answer, right, which without. One your, which one of your two books are you using, yeah? yeah. Which are you using mm. and that's what i do in the court i mean i just say can i see the correct sentence which communication passe syntax grammar for the avoidance of perjury or can you show me which dictionary yeah that you're using so that i can actually read what you're saying because i can't read a thing i can see what i could think what it could mean because in the language i was taught came out of the oxford dictionary and i could think it means this but i don't want to think because that's wrong i want to know yeah because i need to know and give you an answer by thinking, I could get myself into trouble, and that would be perjury. And I might lie, I might tell you something that's not true, and I don't want to do that. I want to remain in honour. I have God's armour on me, which is being correct. I wish to, I wish to remain correct and not give you a wrong answer. So I have not in, enough evidence. Yeah, I need the evidence to be able to give you an answer. You're lacking. There's void. There's void of a, a cipher on your wordage. There is no cipher on the wordage to give me the name, give me the meaning. The denotations of the words that's written within this document i can't read it yeah oh. yeah so no, it's, it's uh, different. Like, yeah what 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 context are we talking what language are we speaking do you know i sometimes think about the simplicity of the pioneers so you know you you emigrate and you go and find some land where there's nobody you're not taking it off anybody and you don't have to fight <laughs> to to possess it but and you make a little oasis in the desert you make you know you you cultivate the land and you start to make a living and then maybe there's a hundred of you and you say it would be good to have a sheriff you know who, who's a good upstanding stable person who sort of knows what our morals are and what what laws we you know follow as a community let's appoint them as a sheriff and then that person would only have that authority for as long as they fulfilled the expectations of the community so if they started taking bribes or they started joining secret societies and having little funny signals to let certain people off or if they started favoring one person or trying to get somebody else into bed with them that's is it the nature of human is it human nature that people are always going to corrupt you know because i think how did the police and the judiciary and the legal profession get so corrupt how did that happen? Is it just Freemasonry? Is it just greed and lust? Is it blackmail? Is it corruption? Is it human nature? If you take it back to a community of 100 people, say, 
let's authorise one person to be the sheriff and we'll keep him in that position as long as he's honourable. And then, and then that's it. It should be that simple, shouldn't it? No, because you've created a problem. I'm sheriff. You're sheriff. Uh, we are, there is, there is no, no one, this, the creator, yeah, so to say, yeah, created man equal. No yeah, man is yeah, all men are created equal before God. That's in the Bible. Anyone, the, only one, the only one above man is creator. So man doesn't answer to man. Yeah? Unless, obviously, he's caused harm, loss, or injury, which is the pretty obvious thing, yeah? Because he's got so in the him. event of harm, loss, or injury, then you would need a judge or a sheriff or, or somebody to... Or someone to stand up for themselves. That's the thing. Yeah, well, see, if... The... When you have a community, yeah? When you have a community, you know, you know, I mean, we, we're going, we're talking about having a policeman. See, this is where you have a, a servant. These are the servants. Someone who, who steps into these positions, like a policeman or a, a judge or anything like that, they, and, and a king even, even a king. Because remember, this is, let's go back to that simple scenario, yeah? Because like, you know, like I've just said, I'm mud. I'm made of mud. Yeah, I'm made of, I'm made of the earth. Yeah. 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 Right? So, you know. This is, this is my land. This is my land. No yeah. one can trespass on my land. Yeah. This is my crown. Yeah. I have the natural crown, yeah? So I am of the nature. So I am of the crown. This is my crown territory, yeah? No one can trespass on the crown territory. All your acts and statutes are now void because they don't apply to the crown, yeah? And I am the true crown, just like you are the true crown, and like everybody else is the true crown. Now, the other one that we've got on that, that throne, yeah? They, make, they wear a man-made crown, yeah? Right. So they've taken their sign because they've signed on an oath. They've sworn an oath to serve us. They are lesser than the man. The king and the queens are lesser than the men and the women. Okay? Because yeah, they, yeah, you're making a hierarchy. Yeah, you're making a hierarchy. So you're, what you're talking about there is, yeah, when you put in somebody in that position to do these things to clean up the mess, so to say, in other words, when somebody comes across another man, yeah, and causes them harm, loss, or injury, the community would normally gather up on that one man and then they would ask this servant to clean it up, to go and put this man into correction. Yeah, because, I, mean, like, I mean, if you go back to the, uh, not the Aborigines, the uh, Africans, yeah, if somebody in, their, in, the, in the clan or the, whatever you want to call it, yeah, if they did something wrong, they would sit them in the middle and they would all sit round them and pray for them. Yeah, not just that, they would tell them everything good about them. They would tell them, you have this quality, you have that quality. I knew you from a young boy. You were a good hunter. You have honour. You, you were good to your mother. You were, they love bomb them. But that's also a form of mind control. A lot of cults use love bombing as a means of recruitment. You know, so it's like, it's like anthropology or something. The study of, this is what they've been trying to study intensively since world war one is behavior modification and it's gone this is where we've ended up with this mask ritual compliance shit going on is that how how can we modify the behavior of the masses but it like you said if you're not going to get, delegate authority to one member say in a community of 100 you're not going to make a sheriff well in an ideal community you've got a family so you've got a man whose job is to protect and provide and you've got a woman whose job is to nurture and encourage and you know and you've got your roles which are you know biological it's not anti-feminist or anything it's just you know men are generally stronger and more able to protect and women are able to have babies and men can't so there's certain roles you just enact but because they've broken society down so much say for instance like Okay, Frank was in the car, or so anybody was in a car, and then there's an attempt at taking his property. And so his job is to pr protect his own property, but maybe things get muddied because there's somebody there that he also has to protect or whatever. It, get, it just gets messy, but certainly gets messy when there's so many, the nuclear family's been broken down. So I find single parent women are being targeted hugely because they don't have a protector. They don't have a covering, you know? So I don't know the answer, but I know it's valuable to keep looking for the answers, you know, you know and it is hard. It, it, well, it is hard 
when if you have if you have right on your side but then force and bullies overrule righteousness people do get hurt people do get locked up people do get their property taken you know how, how's carol woods how's john people, patterson people get their houses robbed you know no difference yeah they do they do you know, these things happen like you know it's, it's all about contract remember this is what you've got to remember. It's all about contract because there is a, that's the only law. Just and look at it as the only law. The only law is contract. Yeah, where's your contract? If they if, if they've no contract with you, you know, that's fine. I mean, like yeah, this this one here then. So this is uh, a courtesy notice then. I have a courtesy notice if they wish to uh, deal with me. Like yeah, if they want to do things like if they wanted to take something off me, that's fine. And then it's my terms and conditions of Schedule A. And uh, like, uh, I'll, I'll, I won't read the quantum side of it because you might, uh, well, I'll read it. For the live life claimants, endurance, harm, damage, caused, uh, damage caused claim of the public servants, fist, boot, and lethal weapon usage is with the penalty forfeit of the 65,000 one troy ounce 99 pure silver coins mm -hmm. so these are these are the, these are the, that's just one i mean the, the other terms and conditions like or i'll read it in the layman's terms any claim absence of a lawful binding contract between the parties the penalty be, will, will be with 600 silver coins per hour or any portion thereof after yeah uh, and, i mean I, i've also put it into the quantum so i've got it in both so it's for the both and i put it and i've also got on here the o, the oak claim brackets and italics parentheses and quotations is with the function of the communication com communication ease with this conveyance frame of the fiction english babble which is the like, put in the frames because when you put brackets around words yeah they're null and void on the page same with anything in a box anything that's in a box does not exist on the page yeah it's its own page there's your four corners that's your four corner rule okay yeah, that's what's on that document. If I if there's a box in that document, whatever's in that box is not seen in the on the document. Okay, that's why they put boxes inside boxes inside boxes. You know, it's just like how they do with everything. So you have your terms and conditions, and if they wish to continue, then that's fine because then you'll have their contract. You'll literally then have a contract with them that they're doing to you. If they wish to continue, that's fine. You know? it's like, but if we take this to its fullest extent we'd all have to walk around with body cams recording devices on us we'd all have to speak a funny language whether it's quantum or you know whatever it is and we'd all have to not engage it's it's inhuman it's inhuman that's why, that's why i did what that's why i've been working you know and i've been trying to solve this so they bring this solution for the ease for the ease of the people yeah because that's what it was all about because right now we've got to we've you know We've got a lot of dirty, horrible, nasty people in this world. Yeah, okay? but do you know you said the thing about if the military don't get behind, like with King John Winoa or whoever, if the military don't step up, then you could have right on your side, but there's nobody to bring it to pass. So, for instance, you could say, if you use your boot or fist on me, you know, it's going to cost you 600 pieces of silver, and then they put the boot in and give you, you know, give you a bit of a knocking around. Well, in order to get your 600 pieces of silver, the, like, who's going to make that happen? Who's how? This is what I'm saying. If there's no free will in people wanting to do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do, if there's no, what does he say? I acted in good faith. If there's no good faith or goodwill in humanity, I don't know. I don't, all I know is that things are horrendously corrupt and humanity does need to say no, 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 this is not happening. I'm not just saying no because that's a negative. We used to say, we need to say, please, I learned this with child psychology with having a daycare. I wouldn't say to the children, no, or don't do that, or you can't do that. I used to say, let's do this. I used to redirect you know, or let's, let's, let's try this way, or let's keep, you know, keep our hands to ourselves, or let's, you know, always try and make it a positive request rather than a prohibitive rule. 
missing, you're missing the point though. <clears throat> you're missing the point here. Right. See, when you stick to your grounds, stick to your guns, and don't cave in, yeah, and don't bow down. Yeah. It, somebody's somebody's got to break, and it's the difference between the pillar of salt and pillar of stone. Yeah. So he who knows what he's doing, yeah, can stand firm, and won't be moved because he'll have his standing. He'll have his inner standing. He'll understand exactly what he's doing. Yeah. It's the police that will wither away. And you'll find that they don't contract and they decide and they walk off and leave you alone. And it's not until you do those things and not until you've actually been into those situations that you will actually realize that that's all you have to do. It really is that easy. I suppose the, the example of a child is different because, you know, you can't stand, you know, if a child is walking up to a fire and about to put their hand in, it's no good you standing in the in the knowledge and the truth that fire burns. You're going to have to restrain that child or put the fire out in order to fulfil your role of protecting them. So you're talking adult to adult engagement. But look, I've got somebody coming round. So um, is there anything, um, it was just good to touch base. Is there anything, any news, any good news? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, what uh, the Purple Gun community is flying. It's cooking on gas and that was the bit about it you know because it was about because they work in the two-dimensional world you know they, they need documents when they read documents yeah they say it's a different ball game and when you've got a sea pass when you've got the correct things to operate as a man in the factual world rather than the negative which is the the birth certificate driving license passport which is the legal fiction which is the dead entity that dead entity does not have a voice Okay, only the man, only the man or woman that's on the land, so to say, yeah, or of the land, yeah, that has realized who they are. Know thyself. If you don't know yourself and you're going to walk around and say that you're a person, yeah, if you're going to accept as a person, then obviously those acts and statutes apply to the person. And that's, yeah. that's the way it comes down to, because that's all they apply to. Okay? Yeah. So you have to, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an investment I keep saying to people, you know, you get off the television, get off all that and just invest that time on yourself i did that's yeah. all i did i'm no different than anyone else out there yeah. once you see what the truth is you'll know what you where you've been going wrong and if you want to know what the problem is go and look in the mirror but it isn't you're know, the fact that you're you was made the problem he was programmed wrong you know you're not thinking straight you've been put definitely, into a trap definitely yeah um, every time i talk to baron david ward i have to wobble give my head a wobble because it's like he just shows me how much is programming and how much is um, just training to comply and training to fear. You know, it's like we, we've been we've been a giant experiment for mad scientists for at least a century. All right, look, we'll check in again. The Baron um, takes on with the fiction. See, the Baron takes them on with that fiction. But again, you know, for that for that those acts and such is to apply to that fiction, they still have to presume, uh, produce a wet ink signature. I know, when I sent the first three legal documents of his to the Director of Public Prosecutions, they hired a specialist international solicitor to even start to get their heads around what he was saying. And, and like, they hired, a special, they hired somebody highly qualified in international law to try and get their heads around it, you know. So I'm looking forward to the next, the next steps. But we can only go as fast as we can according to the levels of mind control that we're willing to shed and the levels of fear that we're willing to lose. Because, for instance, I, I had seven years no claims bonus on my insurance for driving, right? So my insurance was really reasonable. Then I went to Lanzarote for a couple of years and I didn't drive out there because there was no need. I was right down in the port. But then because I didn't drive for two years, I lost all my no claims bonus. And now they're lo uh, looking for me to pay 1,380 1, euros for a year's insurance on my car. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. And I'm actually thinking to myself, shall I just, you know, sell the car? Shall I just like take the car off the road? And that seems such an imposition because if it was my horse and trap, you know, if I had the right, I used to ride my horse into town for milk sometimes when I lived a couple of miles outside the town. If I wanted to take my pony and trap to go and get provisions, nobody would have the right to say to me, you can't travel. You know, yeah. a, car, a car is still counted as horsepower 
So it has gone crazy that you can go driving and police can stop you and say, turn back, you're locked down. This, this area is locked down, no access allowed. It's like the world's gone crazy, you know? It's gone crazy. That's their sea lanes. That's their, sea lanes. That's their corporation, corporate sea lanes, yeah? Yeah. And anybody going around as the, corporate, as, as the corporate or, or as the body corporate, i.e. the legal fiction, you know? You, that, no. that road, you haven't got your sea lanes. You haven't got your sea lanes and they can turn you back. They, could, they control their sea lanes, but we, they don't control our sea lanes. Yeah. We well, have our own prepaid. Right. You're all, paid, you're all prepaid. This is just the other side to it. I mean, most of the common law guys, they also, they all know. They all know about the miners' account. They all know about the birth certificates. It was created to a bond by your weight in gold floating on the stock exchange. They can go onto the fidelity.com and they can go and see how much money they really worth. And that you're all, they're, all, they're, all, they're all trading on your, you know, they're all trading on your securities anyway. That's what all the police are doing right now. They don't realise what they're doing. The police don't. It's not their no, fault. They no, they don't. Look, I've got to go. I've got somebody coming in two minutes. Okay. Um, let's do this again. It's, it's fascinating to me. It's fascinating to me. Good luck. Take care, mate. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.